So hello everyone, my name is Nina grigic Klacha, and today I will be talking to you about some recent research I've been working on with my amazing colleagues Gabriel Lima, Adrian Weller and Elisa Redmiles. So today I'll be talking to you about the dimensions of diversity in human perceptions of algorithmic fairness. So as you all know, algorithms are nowadays used to help people make all kinds of different decisions that have important societal impacts. So uh, some of these, uh, some examples of uh, these decision-making settings are hiring, where algorithms help people make hiring decisions. They help uh, doctors with medical diagnostics. And finally, this isn't working, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's randomly clicking through. <laughs> okay, I'll just wing it. It's okay. okay. I'll just wing it. Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll just wing it. So uh, in general, uh, so yeah, many different settings, uh, including uh, medical diagnostics, hiring, and even helping judges make bail decisions. Uh, so since these are settings with important societal implications, it's important to understand, is it fair to use these algorithms in practice? In this talk, we're, uh, we're going to focus uh, on the setting of granting bail decisions as a case study. Uh, so as an example, we're going to focus on the compass tool that many of you are probably familiar with that's used across the United States to help judges make bail decisions. So how does this system work in practice? As an input, it takes information about some defendant. And in order to help a judge make a bail decision, it processes this information and produces an output of interest. For example, that could be the defendant's predicted risk of criminal recidivism. And so how do we answer the question if this algorithm is fair to be used? Well, a lot of prior research started looking into this question. And uh, one of the first were journalists from ProPublica that found evidence of bias in the outputs of this decision-making system. Specifically, what they found is that black defendants tend to have an overestimated uh, risk of criminal recidivism, while white defendants tend to have an underestimated risk of criminal uh, recidivism. And this is one example of um, a notion of unfairness that focuses on the fairness of the inputs, uh, outputs, or distributive fairness. In our work, we focus on a notion of procedural fairness that focuses on the fairness of the decision-making inputs. Specifically, we ask the question, is it fair to use certain, question, uh, certain features for making bail decisions? So how do we answer that question? There are two possible approaches. First, we could take a normative approach and we can prescribe how fair decisions should be made. So this is the uh, approach that's taken in anti-discrimination laws, uh, which state that some features should be treated as sensitive or protected, such as race or gender, depending on the, set, on the setting, and other features are non-sensitive and they can be used freely. On the other hand, we take a descriptive approach and we try to describe human perceptions of fairness. Uh, what prior research has found is something interesting, uh, that people often do not reach consensus in their judgments of fairness. So what we're trying to understand in this research project is uh, how do fairness perceptions differ across people? We're going to try to answer this question uh, in this talk in three stages. First, I'm going to introduce the experimental design. Then I'm going to show you a bit about which features are perceived as fair or unfair to be used. And finally, we're going to address our main question, how do these uh, fairness perceptions differ across people? So let's start with the experimental design. So we conducted a survey. Uh, focusing on the Compass tool and the ProPublica datasets related to the Compass tool. Uh, we recruited a sample of 329 uh, prolific crowd workers from the United States, and all of them uh, um, participated in our survey in the following way. First, uh, we introduced them with the setting of the Compass decision-making task. So we said there is this Compass tool that's used to help judges make bail decisions. Then, we gave them an example of a feature that could be used by this tool. So for example, uh, we would say something like, uh, this tool could make decisions based on the age of the defendant. Then we asked people to tell us if they think it's fair or not 
to use such a feature for making bail decisions. And we repeat this process for eight different features from the ProPublica dataset, including the current criminal charges and the number of prior crimes and so on. After respondents answered to these uh, set of questions, we gathered some data about their individual characteristics. Uh, namely, we focus on gathering data about their socio-demographics and some prior experiences that are relevant to the decision-making task. Later on, we trained a linear model where we tried to predict people's fairness judgments from their individual characteristics. So here, now uh, I'm just showing you an example of one question where we gathered fairness judgments about the defendant's age. So we described the feature and asked them to report their fairness rating on a seven-point Likert scale. Regarding their socio-demographics and prior experiences that we gathered, uh, we gathered 10 things in total. Regarding socio-demographics, we gathered the basic things like age, gender, race, education, and political leaning. And related to prior experiences, we focused on experiences that might be relevant to the task of making bail decisions. Specifically, if they heard of the Compass tool, whether they or their friends and rel relatives are in the legal or law enforcement domain uh, for their job, uh, have they ever attended the bail hearing, and have they ever served on a jury? So um, one important thing to note here is that these independent variables that we're using, uh, so the social demographics and prior experiences, are something we cannot experimentally manipulate. So all of the results that we're presenting, we're commenting on the correlation between individual characteristics and fairness judgments, and we cannot make causal claims. Uh, so now that we're done with the experimental setup, let's take a look uh, what people think about the fairness of using different features for making bail decisions. Uh, so what you can, you can't really see, but uh, what you should be able to see here on the x-axis are eight different features from the ProPublica dataset. Uh, so this contains information about the defendant's number of prior crimes uh, as an adult and also juvenile crimes. Uh, it contains information about the current arrest charge and also the defendant's age, gender, and race. And what you can see here are people's average fairness ratings of using these features. This red line that you see denotes the neutral position. So what we can see is that many of the features from the ProPublica um, dataset are considered unfair to be used on average. What we can see here is a, an, uh, a nice little ordering of features where the first three that are predominantly considered fair are those that are related to the current arrest charge and the adult criminal history. Then we have two features related to the juvenile criminal history that are perceived as less fair to be used. And finally, we have features that are demographic factors like age, gender, and race of the defendant, which are perceived to be the least fair to be used. However, what I'm showing you here is just the average uh, fairness rating. And what you can see now is the standard deviation of these things. So, what we can see is that fairness judgments vary quite a bit across respondents. And the main topic that we're pursuing in this paper is trying to figure out, is there a systematic pattern? Is there a systematic relationship between this variance in people's judgments and their individual characteristics? So now let's try to see what we found. Um, the, our main finding is that we observe differences, we observe some systematic patterns uh, in fairness judgments uh, that vary with respect to the respondent's political leaning and prior life experiences. So now what you can see here is a similar plot to the last one where we show people's, again, average fairness ratings and how they differ with respect to their political leaning. So what we see is the consistent pattern across all of these eight features. And that is liberal participants rate features as less fair than conservative leaning participants. So throughout all of the eight features. 
This finding is consistent with prior findings in social psychology and psychology in general, and namely with the moral foundations theory, which also found similar patterns of differences uh, in fairness perceptions in other settings with respect to people's political leaning. Uh, however, this is not the only pattern we noticed. Uh, we uh, also found that some prior experiences influence how people think about fairness. Namely, if a person has attended a bail hearing in the past, they tend to believe that certain features are less fair to be used for making bail decisions. Specifically, that features related to juvenile criminal history are less fair to be used. And what you can see on this slide, you don't have to look in the table uh, uh, through the table in detail. This is our full linear model. So what we're showing here is our multivariate multiple linear regression that has eight dependent variables, the features, and 10 independent variables, the individual characteristics. And what we can see here is that very few things show a systematic significant relationship. Namely, as we saw in the plot earlier, political leaning is significantly related to the perceived fairness of all features, and attending a bail hearing, as we said, is related to perceptions of fairness of using uh, juvenile uh, criminal history. Uh, uh, what's um, interesting to point out here is that many demographic factors do not actually exhibit a significant relationship um, with fairness judgments, even though we hypothesized they might based on some prior research in social psychology. So we conducted some additional analysis of what happens when we remove political leaning from our models. And we found that in that case, age also exhibits a weakly significant effect in some settings. However, overall, political leaning seems to be subsuming most of these uh, effects, most of this variation across people. And just to summarize our findings, uh, so what we found uh, in our research is that in the compass setting, uh, people's fairness judgments vary with respect to their political leaning and their prior experience of attending an, a bail hearing. The latter is very interesting uh, because it shows that it might be important to consider dimensions of diversity that go beyond demographic and ideological differences that uh, we typically focus on when we try to ensure diversity. Uh, what's important to note here is that relevant dimensions of diversity might differ across decision-making settings and cultural contexts. We focused on US-based respondents, uh, on the task of making bail decisions. However, based on much research in so social psychology, we could expect that this might vary based on the context um, and the culture. So when we want to make any claims about perceptions of fairness if, in a specific setting, we need to try uh, to take a look at the exact setting and the society of interest. Uh, and then finally, as the main implication of our findings, uh, we would say that increasing calls for diversity in the design, oversight, and governance of algorithms, uh, with this increasing calls, it's important to identify relevant dimensions of diversity in the context of interest. And why would this be something that's important for us to do? Uh, because what's the goal of ensuring diversity in some settings? Because we want to be able to hear the opinions of that diverse group of people. We want to have adequate representation of diverse views. And because of that, we need to understand which dimensions of diversity are actually the ones that we want to represent. So uh, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you so much. And so if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to. Thank you. Great talk. Um, I have a somewhat philosophical question. So the notions of justice or fairness are human made concepts. So when I interpret your results, should I think of as like there are some people who are biased based on certain demographic characteristics? Or should I think that the notion, the concept of justice and fairness are more complex? And there are certain heterogeneities on how should we define fairness in today's population. 
Yeah, thank you. That's a really interesting question. And a lot of research has been recently looking into these dimensions. Uh, and it seems that there is a lot of heterogeneity, not just with respect to the factors that we mentioned here, but also with respect to other factors. So, for example, uh, in some prior research, we found uh, that perceptions of fairness uh, don't vary just on people's characteristics, but also based on their beliefs about the properties of features. So for example, what we found here that left and right leaning people uh, perceive the fairness of using features differently. They also perceive the properties of those features differently. So for example, left leaning people will consider all features to be less volitional and less under the control of defendants than right leaning people. So they're, there are many interesting dimensions here. It's a rich space. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. This was fascinating. I'll share, I don't work in academia. I work in industry and I've actually been involved in um, assisting 10 jurisdictions that were interested in using a pretrial risk assessment, not Compass, a different one. We did a bias assessment and I was curious why you chose a crowd worker approach. And the reason I asked this is because my experience has been generally it's not the political leanings or the personal characteristics of the individuals, it's the job role they have that applies to or the role they have in the room that changes the way that they perceive fairness in the algorithm. So the superior court judge has a very different view than the county official, has a very different view than, than the bailiff, and has a very different view than the formerly incarcerated individual. And so it's more the perspective they bring to the room rather than their personal beliefs. And I was curious if you'd thought to kind of work with people who are integrated in the decision-making system related to who's choosing to use these algorithms. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, so uh, I'll try to address all of the points. Uh, so um, we focused on crowd workers. Uh, but we did manage to recruit some people who work in the legal domain. So we do not have a fine-grained approach here. Uh, we do not know if they're police officers or judges, but they are in either law enforcement or some part of the legal domain. And what's interesting is we did not identify uh, at least in our sample, a significant difference in how they're judging the fairness of these features. However, the effect that we did find to be significant is political leaning. Uh, so that that's one part of that thing. Uh, however, of course, I completely agree with the points that you are making, uh, That uh, and that would, of course, require a more fine-grained study, and that would require recruiting professionals from specific sub subdisciplines, which is, of course, a bit more um, difficult to recruit some uh, participants because they're also fewer in numbers. Uh, but I think that's a very interesting direction for, uh, for future work. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I saw your slide about how more liberal people kind of generally gave more, kind of lower, um, the, the things were less fair. But then if you looked at very conservative versus conservative, there's a lot of areas where they had, they thought things were less fair. Um, do you know why that could be the case? I know that this isn't causal, but do you have any like hypothesis? Thank you very much for the absolute great question. Uh, so yeah, this is something that we were wondering quite a bit. So uh, there are two answers here. First one relates to our data. So as you can see, the standard error bars for very conservative people are very large. Why? Because we had very few in our sample. So we tried to recruit as many as we could, but the thing with many crowdsourcing platforms is they're quite biased in having more liberal leaning participants. So there were actually very few respondents that self-reported to be very conservative. Uh, so our estimate of the mean here is not so reliable. There is a much larger standard error than for the other ones. So we cannot make strong claims that they're lower than conservatives uh, in, in this direction. So that's one thing. But also another possible explanation, so I do not have any data to back this up, uh, but another possible explanation is uh, which people decide to report that they're very conservative. So in the United States, uh, that might uh, 
also, for example, the neoliberal people who are also, or it, it depends which, which people exactly decide to report as being very conservative. So that might be a dimension that we would need to uh, examine in, in more detail to understand. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. So um, we're going to move on to the next presentation, but can we please give one more round of applause? Thank you.